Well, it's big, stinky, and green all over. No, not your mom. I'm not making mom jokes on this channel. Hi, welcome back to Frazzled Dad's Minis. I'm Jim, Frazzled Dad. And in today's episode, we're going to make this from this. It's all about orcs today and my learning on working with green skin. I got a set of great busts from the Academics Kickstarter. I'll put a link down in the show notes. I'm not sure if they're taking late pledges or not. The Kickstarter was a little rough with communication and execution. Uh, some of the pieces that I got um, weren't well cleaned and rinsed before they were cured, but I'm kind of willing to move past all of that because the sculpts themselves are just fantastic. Um, and it's a pretty good set of things. And this orc in particular really struck stuck out to me uh, because I haven't ever really focused just on orc skin. I've done like one or two sort of throwaway pieces, but I really wanted to dive in and see what I could learn off of focusing on green skin. And I also wanted to work hard on continuing my exploration of working with heavy bodied acrylics. Uh, so aside from one or two outliers, I focused just on that in this session. So without further ado, let's jump in and start taking a look at where I got. I've been fooling around with different priming things for the last several months, and I decided to get back to trying Steinal Res through my airbrush. Um, been having some airbrush drama, but I took everything apart, worked really hard cleaning session. Um, despite Steinal Res saying it doesn't need thinning, I find that it does. This is probably thinned a little bit over one to one, and I'm shooting it at about 25 PSI, but uh, made good progress, and I was pretty happy with the results. So I think I'm going to stick with this because uh, it really is a lovely, good flowing primer. I missed getting footage of getting the base coat down. Doesn't matter. What I decided to try here was starting with what I wanted for the mid-tone. This is based on some advice I got from a really great online pal who's amazing. And rather than starting at the dark, she recommended I start at the mid-tones and then you can work up and down. And I really liked that approach here. Even though this is green, uh, I like the approach overall, and I think I'm going to be using that for my next several skin pieces. I find it really helpful to take a very strong light source. In this case, I have a really bright tra tactical pocket flashlight that I use, and take a picture of how light strikes your figure, because this is a great guide, and you'll see me as I'm painting go back to this exact image several times, because it's a great reference it's a roadmap. Paint brighter stuff here. Paint darker stuff here. It's a really great tip. Thanks to some technical difficulties, we're skipping ahead to where I've got a lot of the yellow in place already. Uh, this is me using that reference photo that I have and starting to get my yellow highlights in. I started out trying Camara's cold yellow and I actually didn't like that very much. At one point, I switch over to M. Graham's Cadmium Yellow, which has cadmium in it, so don't lick your brush when you're using it. And I had a lot better luck just with coverage. I had one online pal suggest to actually stir the Camara. I did that, um, but I haven't gone back to it. Anyway, this is now following that roadmap about where to get those highlights in. And then much of the other work is just going to be glazing, glazing, glazing. Excuse the really crappy freeze frame. I couldn't actually get a decent freeze frame out of the video. But here I'm going back and comparing that reference photo to what I've actually got on the figure. And I can't recommend this enough. Again, it's a roadmap. It's a great way to stay on track with what you need to be doing. Much of the rest of the work is just the same sort of stuff, right? Um, hitting some of the highlight area, glazing, and trying to smooth the transitions. A little bit of stippling, a little bit of glazing, and just staying after it. Part of this for me was that practice work on glazing, which I still struggle with. 
Now at this point, I'm starting to hit some of the darker areas and I'm using that Graham Violet to catch the star stars, to catch the scars, to catch some of the creases, the wrinkles. And again, I really like this approach of darkening down from the mid-tone versus having to build everything up. And then more glazing. <laughs> I didn't catch video of starting uh, my log, but you know, as usual, at the beginning of my session, I laid out my, what my goals were. And at this point, I kind of felt I was about half or three quarters of the way working through the green skin. And it was a good time to take a moment and just write down some notes on how I was doing. And in this case, I just jotted down some thoughts about the particular paints that I was using. Keep a log. I, I, I talk about this in my learning video. It's really helpful to jot down these notes. First off, the mechanics of writing something down helps cement that in your brain. But then you can go back and read those notes at a later point. Really helpful practice. And I can't recommend it enough. I didn't write it down on my goals, but I was very excited to work on the beard um, from this, and apologies for the cable running through the frame. Uh, there was a lot of interesting character I felt to the beard and how it was textured, so I'm just laying down a base of dark uh, burnt umber from scale color, and then I'm going to come back and work details on that, and I'll use Pretty much the colors I've got on the palette already, uh, some of that cadmium yellow, I'm adding in some white, and my goal on working on this was to get some careful brushwork and try to build up the image of texture in addition to what was on the sculpt. And I wasn't happy with my brush control. I actually ended up painting over the entire beard and starting from scratch. The whole point of this was to practice, right? And I wasn't happy with where my practice was going. So start over, repaint, and get after it again. I was much happier with my second uh, go around at the beard because I was doing better with brush control. I'd figured out better thinning and better flow improver use of those uh, and the results were a lot better again it's just paint and plastic don't be afraid to paint over something and restart it now it's time for eyes eyes are always a struggle for me but this is a great time to practice my general approach for eyes is to use Pro Acryl's Ivory, something with a little bit of gray, not a complete bright white, uh, a standard black, in this case it's Vallejo, and then whatever color I'm going to use for the eye. Lots of flow improver for me is key. You want that paint coming off of the brush smoothly, and then I brace my hands really well, and I always use magnifying glasses because uh, I got bad eyes. Practice, practice, practice. I'm not great. I'm getting better. Now it's just catching up the final details. Again, my goal was not to make this a big display piece. It was practice. I'm not getting really fancy with anything around the other pieces there. I wanted to give a little color to the necklace, and I consciously chose the yellow and the green uh, to mimic parts of, to mimic the skin. And then just playing around with a few other things. Uh, and then the horns and the teeth were all very straightforward and simple. This wasn't the big part of this piece for me. Again, it was the skin and the beard. 
and just general practice. But I didn't want to leave these naked and unfinished. There you have it. I'm pretty happy with the results. Um, I'm always very hard on myself, but I focused in the amount of time that I wanted to spend on this. I had a clear two or three things that I wanted to work on, the beard, learning more about heavy acrylics, and doing my first serious green painting job, green skin job. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with the results. I could go back and do a bunch of things still to this, but I'm good where it is. I learned what I wanted to, and so it's time to set it off on the shelf. So without further ado, here is the final result. Thank you very much for watching. If you would do all the regular things, subscribe if you're not already. That way you automatically get notifications when I drop new content. If you enjoyed this, kindly give me a thumbs up and let me know down in the comments if you like orc skin and what you're doing and what you're learning about painting green skin and any, suggest any successes you've had. Until next time, remember, be kind, especially to yourself. Learn something, experiment, goof around. Remember, at the end of the day, it's just pain plastic. Until next time, bye-bye.